So welcome to this very kind of informal meeting. And uh, I'm actually, although I'm doing this through Zoom, I'm actually on site from where the picture is about 200 yards from there. So in a building on the top of the hill. So I'm glad that I'm today actually speaking from Sri Lanka and, uh, and uh, in a place where I would be working long time ago for about four or five years. So uh, there are students as well as staff members as online members participating. So this is 2007, somebody's painting this board. And what I'm going to do today, just like in a normal lecture, I have to tell what I'm going to do and do what I'm going to do and then tell what I did. So that's basically what I'm going to do. So I my first section is about how did this happen? That's number one. Then talk a little bit about nursing and allied health potential that is there at the moment. And the third one is what we missed. We missed means as academics, now coming to kind of retirement level, what we have missed and our role for recovery is what I'm going to talk about in the way that we see it. So just to introduce myself, I'm actually a Chula. My name is Chula Gunasekara. I'm a retired citizen. So I have 43 years of working experience as a clinician, as a researcher, as a teacher and an administrator. So I worked for 21 years in Sri Lanka, 22 years abroad. So almost 50% on either side. So I kind of understand a little bit about the environments in both kind of countries. So how did this happen? Now, this was uh, the uh, a student hall at some time. And that was actually the old dental faculty. And when I was trying to find a space for the students, uh, for the aged students, I was told it was full, there was no space. And unfortunately, it's for the only location that was within the reach of the university that can be used. So I went into more details about this at that time to find this. The hall was full. There were only eight registered students and the rest are gadgets. So I thought that was fantastically very easy. So let's transfer the eight registered students, somehow find accommodation in the other halls. So that's what I did. And eight registered students were transferred. So the hall was ours, so they couldn't do anything at all. So that's how we got the site back to become another faculty, which was the old dental faculty. Right, so we went on from there. And the Allied Health, when you start a new faculty, because this is a new program, which we've been developed for years, you get what is called seed money. And seed money can be used very quickly and this was three months before the, the students were due being developed, a building that was at the rear of the medical faculty, which will be just at the top of the nursing quarters. So that's where it is, it's a perfect location. So before the students were coming at the first batch, this building was completed. And this was the lost space for the AHA students because they could never go there. Why is what I'm going to talk about? So because the, um, the allied health students could not go there, okay? So we ended up here. Lady Hill staff quarters on one side, University of Peradeniya, Dangol there. Allied health sciences, this is a temporary board that was put up. There was an old uh, kind of a hotel, you can't call it a hotel, kind of accommodation area, which had to be converted suddenly to take all these students in there. So there are two people whom I kind of uh, consider as foster parents at that time, because they did so much work to get this faculty started. This was 24 hours before the students were due. That's exactly uh, Professor Paj Pereira's voice saying, how the hell can I clear all this rubbish within 24 hours? Because that was the task that was given to him to make it really good for by the end of the day. So, and Professor Dibila was there and they did a fantastic job at that time. And the two vice chancellors who were the, uh, uh, Professor Kapil Gunasekara, and then it was taken over by Professor Agabe Gunawadana. And if you see the expression of uh, 
ఒకసారి అబే గుణవాదం యూ విల్ సీ దట్ ఫేస్ టెల్స్ యూ హౌ మచ్ ట్రబుల్ దేస్ అహెడ్ యూ కెన్ సీ ఇట్ సో బట్ దే వర్క్ టైర్లెస్లీ టు గెట్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ on site and there were hidden players as well who did so hard this is dr gamini yeah, hitinaika and then we had um uh, deputy vice chancellor who was working so hard and professor sevanesam here and then the registrar who worked hard and dr kisirili and he was the engineer who was the in charge of the it center who took a extra effort to help us to get our program started and also the eltu staff there as well so here is the accountant and i'm showing them because when we started this faculty we had to i showed you the room that had to be prepared and we had to transport chairs and everything and these people actually transported uh, chairs and everything to that faculty to to lady hill so that the students could start so uh, they worked any any job that needs to be done so that's the dedication these people had and uh, the uh, assistant registrar she was here and kamali and i hope she may be online and thank you so much she was out supervising everything all over the place trying to see what's been done yeah so that was how it was you might recognize this hall now right at the bottom of that building and here is another person who supervises everything so that everything will have be happen on time which is very unusual thing that you couldn't expect when you're building anything but that did happen so then after looking at these pictures you might think oh my god who proposed this chaos that is the feeling you get because it's completely chaotic isn't it no no planning at all it looks like that but then let's go back a little bit more history to see what really has happened now this is a crucial picture this was taken on 23rd of june 2004 and this was the standing committee meeting i was uh, just uh, i think senior lecturer something in medical faculty and i wanted to get nurses training done for a diploma for two year program uh, because we couldn't develop my nephrology and other programs and also uh, critical care without having advanced nurses so i had to get nurses trained bit more than what we had so we used this opportunity and i had a full proposal done with uh, ug chairman who was professor mendis at the time to uh, do this and um, when this meeting started i was in a corner in this same table uh because i was a visit i was invited because i had to do i was not in the standing committee and who walked in with the camera crew and everything minister minister walked in so you had these people now there yeah minister of health nimal siripala walked in and because the government has changed yeah so it's a new government suddenly this new minister comes in and professor mendis was going out as a ug chairman and professor carlo fonseca was taking me was taking over the usage chairman chief at that time and dr atulak handalene ge sadly professor carlo and dr atulak is no longer with us but they made a huge contribution to get these things done and professor carlo fonseca's comment i still remember saying kasata kosata ammata bambotu kiyala hariyanne ge so so he said we had to we had to go forward so um then um, nimal sirpal came in and said no more no no we can't have two year programs we want four year programs he just decided there say we want four year programs so the whole program set now changed the my nursing two year became a four year and then all the other allied health workers thought good idea let's have our own programs as well so that's how they came so it was an opportunity and now i was doing just nursing came involved with everything else as well so <laughs> then what happened this was in 2005 just a year later not 9 months later the ugc was 25th anniversary and they celebrated it with holding a workshop developing paramedical degree programs so this program was so powered you had the secretary of higher education in there 
you had the Minister of Health in this workshop and all the vice chancellors, all the medical deans and all the program coordinators who wanted to do this program from other universities as well. So it was a big workshop. I remember that very well. Then we had our all committed people. Yeah, we must acknowledge them. And uh, obviously, uh, Dr. Badra. First of all, I'll talk a little bit about Dr. Nimi. Dr. Nimi was pharmacology uh, senior lecturer from medical faculty. And she started doing pharmacy in here. Somehow uh, she had to back down. I think there was a threat or something like that. She got frightened. So she just backed down. So who came to rescue? Who is in front of us? Here we go. Yeah. So he was fantastic. In the way, he is not a pharmacist. He is not a, a, a medical. He is not any of the allied health sciences. He's just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but he did pharmacy and then became the dean as well and ran the faculty for a while doing all these developments. So, fantastic contribution. So, it shows that you can still contribute. But I, I should acknowledge others. Dr. Badra, who is now a professor, um, she did fantastic on thing on radio radiography. Dr. Damika Menike, she's also a professor. Now she, is, uh, she did medical laboratory science to start with. Dr. Suravira was a surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, but not in the university at all. He was a minister of health consultant who we drafted in because voluntarily he came in despite the GMOA threats and everything else. And Dr. Lamamasa, who is now Professor Lamamasa and also your vice chancellor. And uh, he may be listening because I actually sent the link to him. So that's how we got it going. So this happening and then we had to develop the curriculum. Now to develop the curriculum, I was kind of scratching my head as the Dean of the medical faculty at the time to see how to do that. And I contacted British Council and the British Council has a way of uh, sending an open request to all the universities in the world. So they send the open request saying there is a something like called allied health trying to start in university. Is there anybody willing to help? But actually we got positive responses. So Sheffield Hallam University from the UK came forward. University of Malaysia came forward. Pakistan Aga Khan University came forward and all the other professors, academics and everybody came forward. And we had probably the longest workshop that ever anybody will do for seven days in the medical faculty. So my job was to provide cakes, lunch, dinner, drinks, all that. That was my job to do, to get all these things done. They did a fantastic job. And we actually invited the, uh, the uh, BSc holder. There were very few BSc holders from the Open University. So we contacted them and brought them in. And also the certificate holding nurses and uh, lover scientists, et cetera, et cetera, also to join. So we had a very long, very productive workshop. So it was an understanding uh, between the current existing staff, visiting staff, and people who want to do this. So, so it was a learning exercise as well. So these are the names of people who came, who were there, who were here, actually here, and did a fantastic job. So that's the whole group of people who participated in that consultative workshop in 2005 to develop all these programs. Because of this international collaboration, so everything was developed in a modular format, not the original um, uh, uh, terms format. It was used to be terms and so on. So this became a module so that the modules can be exchanged or interchanged between various courses. So for example, if you had a module in mathematics, it will apply to everybody. So they all can go, including not only AJ students, there'll be science students who can come to the same module, There'll be, so that's the model that we followed. So it was very good. So after that work, this came up, the prospectus that was at that time designed only for two years because it probably need a revision immediately after. So <laughs> this is the day one of the first batch of students coming in, 17th of July, 2006. This is the arts theater. So we had a welcoming ceremony there. So you can see the parents on one side and the students here, okay? Right, so our purpose at this time, it was a major event, even the US chairman came into open, op that opening, because this is the 
situation. At that time, all these um, allied health and nursing programs were only having certificate courses and the certificate courses never, the maximum they could go up to a post basic diploma, but this qualification was not good enough to go pass a basic university degree. Without doing a basic university degree qualification, you cannot do anything else like um, any PhDs, MSCs, whatever, you cannot do anything. So this was a stumbling block which we wanted to overcome. And that's exactly why it was a milestone for everybody. So we had the usual welcome. Can you see that? Yeah, it's not formal, formal. Can you see where the tabla man is, where the uh, the person who is doing the, um, what is this, uh, at the piano? Yeah, the, yeah. So, but it was a welcome, yeah, it was a welcome. And here's the, some of the people from the first batch over there as well, I think, okay. And then what they didn't know, we had to safeguard all these students from violence because there was a clash that being planned. And we had taken action for that. The AT theater was fully screened by the secret police. And we had stationed secret police in all the buildings surrounding. And they were watching, nobody knew that. So, so nothing happened there, very good. But this is what was happening in the medical faculty. And the, there was a huge protest going on and uh, saying that they cannot have any students in the medical faculty. So basically they didn't want any of the facilities to be shared with any other student. So we lost, although the programs were done, the students were brought in, we lost everything. There's no access to laboratories, no access, no stuff. So we had a major problem in hand when we had, we had students in hand as well. On top of that, there were no teachers. No teachers because there's not adequately qualified staff to be recruited, that's number one reason. But at least the voluntary staff from other faculties were threatened, so they were not coming in because they were personally threatened. And then the no laboratory access and the medical faculty was a no-go area. So we couldn't do use any of the labs for anything at all. So, but, so then there was one nursing um, graduate applied from India to become a lecturer, remember? So now you cannot work being a foreigner. You cannot work in a national university because of the rules, yeah? So I didn't know how to sort that out. I took and went straight to the immigration controller, straight to the chief and said, this has to be done. Without that, you can't do it. So, okay, 10 minutes, he gave me the work permit to the, for the, uh, this person. So that's, that's how it came along. So the, uh, now uh, Whirlpool is developing because what reason? The political party saw a whole fantastic opportunity to expand the trouble. So, so that's the usual thing, okay? Then other people, some people thought, oh, it's a good chance to get my private agenda fulfilled. So people went on that as well. Then the whole purpose was to fire up both ends. Purpose is to end the program. So that when you fire up both ends, it will eventually end. That's a whirlpool, yeah? It will suck it in. But the aged students were striking for everything. They were even shouting at me, so and all the other staff members as well. And uh, harassed the students who came to work for not boycotting classes and extending rag. They had extended ragging. The ones who were not following following their instructions had extended ragging periods. Then um, brother who and sister, I can't remember which way. This is something. The brother and sister who came one to the medical faculty. And one to the allied faculty were not talking. <laughs> so that's the situation. So then um, the medical students, they were also promoted to strike. And they were striking, they were getting perks because they were served biryani at night. That's what happened. So they were served dinner properly. That was good enough. Why not biryani when we have just size and carry? Then they took an action to say, sack the dean. So I was a dean at that time. Sack the dean, that was the main purpose, yeah. So the sack the dean thing went through the GMO and everything to the parliament. And it was uh, presented saying, dean is the trouble here, get rid of him, then the whole trouble will finish. That was the saying. So the minister of higher education said, 
I will get it home in no time. I'll be there, get him home tomorrow. That's what he said. But my cousin sister was a stenographer in the in the uh, in the uh, parliament. She faxed me immediately, saying, "This is the draft thing. They talked about you. Your duty be sacked." So when they came to sack me, they couldn't because although the vice chancellor can be sacked, the deans can't because deans are elected individuals. They're not appointed. So dean couldn't be sacked only by another election. Only the dean could be sacked. So I survived that one as well. So, so interesting anyway. So then there was a post secretariat. A staff member's house was used as a secretariat to print all the material and everything else. It was very good. I mean, prevent. then they prevented AHS students entering any hospitals or clinics. So that was the medical student's job. And then threatened staff. So we were basically starved. Generally, starved them. Exactly, that was the plan. So, and they actually lost a year of study because of this action, nearly a year. But we were lucky. We were lucky because we had a modular training plant. Yeah. Because we had modules, small, small modules in your curriculum. So I took this up to the, all the other faculties and they all came forward. Every faculty came forward and some from medical as well. They will do a little bit of module. So basically you are developing a Toyota, but you don't exactly know what the Toyota looks like, but you can develop the piece of brake or something that needs to be developed. So senior staff, professor level, senior lecturer level, came from all the other faculties to help us. And we used the laboratories in the other faculties, wet and science and everything else, to get this done. So that is how uh, that happened at that time. So thank you to them as well. So we must remember they all helped you so much. So now we have sorted out the curriculum, then we had no hospital access. The GMO has blocked no hospital access and the staff told not to teach, including the staff in the hospitals, not to teach. Okay, so students told not to unleash, to told to unleash violence whenever possible. That was the plan. So if one of the AHS students got injured or died, it would have been the end of the story, wouldn't it? So that didn't happen, lucky for us, uh, because we, and then hospital administrators were not willing to allow students to come in, so you couldn't go in at all. So Peradeniya, which was just next door, was not available, candy was not available. Not only that, Digana, Navalapitiya, no hospital was available anywhere. So what to do? We didn't know what to do. These are one of the parents meeting. Can you see the parents' faces in the front? They absolutely disgusted. us. They didn't know exactly what's happening at all. And you could see it. So it's just complete doom and gloom all around because they also didn't know exactly what to do. And the students themselves thought, okay, we are dead now. And they put up this board with a, with a coffin in front of the eighth arts theater. So this was all kind of demoralizing everybody. So why not? Here we go. And the, then the plan was actually, I met the minister, uh, Nimal Siripal himself. I said, sir, you have to do something. And then he told me personally, Chula, my hands are tied. You will have to do something. So I said, I'm going to put a case against you. That's okay, do that. Put a case against you. So I had permission to put a case against the minister himself. So I explained the whole program in the Council of Peradani. So we put a case against the Minister of Health. So, and this was supported by fractions, some fractions of nurses, I'll tell you later on, and other allied health unions. So there were six sittings in the Supreme Court. And I was in the box all six sittings. And my lawyer, who was the Romesh Lissar at the time, spoke only two words, and that was it. The rest of us was me. They were asking questions, Dean, Dean, where's the Dean? Ask the question. So I was the one answering everything about students' rights, about the students' education, your levels, everything during that time. So then there was this, then the medical dean was called in. And so at that time I was not the medical dean because I resigned. So the medical dean was there and I was there and the chief justice, three justices were there in the Supreme Court. So I asked direct saying, can we go to Kurunagala? 
because you got two hospitals peradithiya is there kandhi is there why do you want three you don't want three and uh, then uh, the this is in front of the three judges he had to look good isn't it it's fine i will take two hospitals i'll so i said can you bring through the medical students from kurnagala yes i'll do that fine in front of the judges yes fantastic that was my opening so the medical students who were in kurnagala was removed with that so that was the judgment which give us some access that the students can go to kurnagala for learning and we arrange the bus so the hospital with our faculties give a gave a bus so that they can travel although it's 50 50 but most of the certificate holders who were threatened by having a degree because they were worried that their levels will go down helped us okay so there are there were two nursing unions the hamdro union did not want to support this i actually personally explain everything one morning went to the temple and explain everything no pharmacy medical biophysics physiotherapy they were all out supporting so two people two individuals i have to tell you went out of the way to support um, this is uh, ravi kumar desh who still active and and uh, uh, ratna ratna pri so we got that done thank you for them as well and finally you can see we got there yes nursing and where we finally got it everything in place and these are not flowers they are kandian dances can you see it yeah okay so fantastic and then we thought okay the trouble has finished it didn't but to do something i actually developed a equalization program for all the certificate holding nurses and others if they wanted to only a few wanted to study again but at least create an opening so we did all the preparation with workshops and everything design and written the curriculum assessing what is deficient on them and also that ensuring that they all had minimum entry criteria as well so there was no conflict unfortunately i mean i left they did not execute it all the full program was available so that was sad thing so the, now the faculty was there so actually i am so grateful to the all the staff members who were there and the deans who followed followed this team to make the faculty less make this faculty blossom and then that actually leads to the country's development as well so hopefully we are now there that's what is there so we should expand it if possible now research teaching and service goes together okay so if you are a staff member try to do all three because then you become a better staff member just without knowing if you you don't have to update your knowledge as well if you are on research you are always in the cutting edge others others feel it you don't know it others feel that you are at the cutting edge because you are in the research front but teaching teaching is the only way you can transform your ideas i had this advice from one of my seniors who said look if you want to transform anything as a consultant in the medical field it takes 6 years because your registrars have to become consultants then all it changes so so that is how you see so teaching is very important to do the transformation that you want to do and the service obviously you have five areas and it's an expand fantastically to provide a service when you provide service it gives the opportunities to all for innovation for research and so on so here we go i just put a list of things that i picked up say research degrees you can do innovation patenting is still a problem from this kind of country but then try and find who can assist that kind of thing so that so that you take the weight of the innovator so i mean when i visited um, malaysia one of the universities i uh, about their on, online education programs and it was that different say say if there was a innovator in that university the university takes over the innovation and they will patent it and they will commercialize it if possible and let's say uh, antibody kit or something you start selling um then of the net profit 70% goes to the innovator so they were interested in doing something because once they have innovated something this is recognized and then the all the workload is taken over they, it's a costly but then they take the cost away if there's any profit then you get 70% into the innovator in the university when i asked here 
in our university of Pyrazine at that time, it may have changed. Vice Chancellor said, oh, we'll consider giving you 25% of your basic salary. <laughs> That's what they said, okay. So never mind. So what you can do is commercial collaboration is something that you need to, get to propagate all your innovation and research. And then short courses is another thing. So there are lots of subspecialties in your, in your specialties, okay? If you say physical therapy or laboratory science or, or if you have nursing, there are lots of subspecialties. And you can take short specialty courses. You can get external lecturers to come, internal lecturers to do it, make it modular and offer it to everybody. So that brings not only recognition, not only advancement, but also money to the faculty as well. So that's another extra way of earning more money. So then, then short-term skill training, like when you are in a campus holiday, you can have, uh, say, three-day resident workshop or something. So you do certain skill training. In fact, I did one um, uh, medical, uh, I think, ambulance training session down here in this, this thing about one whole day showed how this should be done. So there was ambulances, there was staff and everything else, one workshop one day. So that kind of thing promotes, it actually attracts people and so on. So um, then undergraduate and postgraduate courses, that's where you should focus on. And research methodology, include research methodology in every training program you do, because without having a proper research methodology, you cannot do proper research because otherwise, if you can't publish your work, you just lost it. So, so that's very important and people get frustrated. Then include alumni, include them. There are lots of, of your first batch colleagues who are in very higher levels at the moment in the world. Ask them to join, give a talk on Zoom or something like that so that, so that they can promote some innovation, then also collaboration so you can get advice and everything else as well. Then student exchanges, which happened like with Japan, for example, when I was there, we had a, a interesting discussion. I should say that because you will see what it means. So a Japanese professor who came over here, who came just to visit Peradini, eh, wanted to visit Allied Health because the vice chancellor mentioned there was such a thing is going on, okay? So when he came over here, I, I came with him and then showed what we have done. We had a little bit of a couple of tables down there, two chairs, something like that, nothing very much. So, so, so when he went back over there, he said, there are two things. Is there's an island where nobody is wearing any shoes and you are trying to establish a shoe shop. You can look at it two ways. You can look at it saying it's a completely lost opportunity because you are wasting money. Nobody's using shoes. On the other hand, if you train all of them to use the shoes, it will be the only shop selling the shoes as well. So you have the both ways. You can be positive and negative. So, so he looked at it in a more positive way. And that's how we got Nigata collaboration with student exchanges and so on. And he said, I must say a little bit about him. He retired. Then he said, I want to talk to you. I said, I'm in London. Then he said, I'll come to London. I'm on the way, a world round trip. And he was ending the trip down in London. He said, where shall I meet? So I'll meet you at Piccadilly Circus, if people know. Piccadilly Circus at two o'clock. So I thought he might get late, whatever, but I thought I'll go at two o'clock. So I went there at two o'clock and there's this big roundabout and there's a big pole in the middle. And he was standing there at two o'clock, can you imagine? And he brought me a chocolate from Japan saying, this is for you. That's how it goes. So, uh, so the lesson that we have to learn is that if you see all these troubles, I mean, it was a dead coffin anyway. We can blossom whatever the obstacles are. That's the thing. So, so this is why you have to think about it. You don't have to fight. You have to shout. But you can rescue and, and then blossom with it. But we have to think always, not as a staff member, not as a professor, not as a whoever, as a student, as a trainee as a non-medical staff or non-academic staff, there's a national responsibility for you and there's a social responsibility for you. So you have to think, where is my country going? Always think. So then only you will have some idea where we are going. So to do that, I will tell you a little bit about intellectuals. So an intelligent person is often driven by feelings and desires to expand their knowledge. 
That's how the intelligent pattern will go. An intellectual is somewhat different. An intellectual is uses facts to make calculated decisions based upon sound judgment, have diverse wisdom and foresight and applies their uh, intellect uh, and forward-looking visions for the purpose of awakening society. And the third one here, yeah, do not modify opinion to suit the environment. Now, this is one of the problems we really have in this country. You get academics, you get intelligence, you got high-powered professionals becoming national advisors, yeah? So they sit with the minister or whoever in the row. And if, when, they, when the minister says something good, they will say, yes, yes, fantastic, good idea and all that. Raise the hand and everything. But when he says something bad or non-productive, they keep quiet. They don't say nothing. Now that's the politicization of the game. It's not really politicization. It's your intellectual thing is eroded. So then what happens is the rest of the things say, oh, the academics are silent. So this must be a good one. And they take it on. So we have got enough of that happening in this country because the people who know does not speak up. And that's the issue that we have. So political awareness is important at any level because what we are doing and where we are going. So we should know that. So the political awareness means here is not joining a party or having a placard or something like that. But if there's an issue coming up, you can say, what are the bad things? What are the good things? Write to papers, do a talk, do a debate, do a discussion, something like that. So that you will alert people to say the pros and cons of something. So that then the others will get to know about it. So lack of knowledge is one of the biggest problems we have. So um, what happened when we came to kind of retirement level. We have done so much work and all the staff, everybody has done so much work. And today, imagine, we're just spending the lunch hour trying to do this. You have done all that work. And what? why did this country happen, this what happened? What we had done has been stolen. That's what has happened. That is why we are in such a bottom situation today. So we had seen this already. And we are still not on a recovery path as such, although we don't have cues. So we have a duty to be duty to be aware of what's going on and a duty to inform others so, so that they can be aware too. And use facts, evidence, and experience to critically debate or critically analyze whatever that is there. And this is what we missed. So when we are doing all this academic work and everything else. We did not get in, in, uh, involved in any of the political thinking at all. We did not do anything. I wrote papers to paper, uh, articles, but basically to safeguard the age of students and promote it, but not, not other things. Say, I used to play a trick actually, in a way. I write an article, if I had to be the minister in two weeks time, I write an article, yeah? put it in the paper saying criticism. So then you go to see the minister and you say the point. They say, oh, then Suman, he doesn't know whether he is me who is reading it. <laughs> so, so that is how the information goes. So it's very important to inform people properly. Otherwise, they won't, they won't read the letters you send. They read the papers because the secretaries circle the area that they have to look at. So you need to know how it works. Yeah. So with blessings from all faiths, I hope we will be able to recover this country again. And that leads to a LEADS, yeah, LEADS. Now LEADS is an acronym. So I'm going to stop there. I'll use just 10 minutes to uh, show a little bit of work that other people have been doing, okay? So the share again. Uh -huh. So if you go to Google and say, Sri Lanka leads.com. Okay. This should come up. Let's see. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Here we go. So this is a website that we are running, and it's got it's a complete archive. It's not a very nicely done website because uh, it was done by amateurs like me, you see. So so it's it works. That's all. Okay. So now, LEADS is an acronym. LEADS is for learn, educate, 
assess design Sri Lanka. So that's leads, okay? Now, LED, LED means learn, educate, and assess, means the, actually the logic. So if you have good background information, you make good logical decisions. If you have bad background information, you don't make logical decisions. So LEADS is an educational charity. So we are training at very low level, like advanced level talks. We, the heavy professionals, professors, other academics, other expert people, they will give lectures and everything else at very low level so anybody can understand. So that's what we've been doing for a while. So it's a summary slide here is the economy. The problem is you can see that whatever the amount of water, whether it comes as loans or donations, whatever, nothing sticks because there are so many holes in the bucket. The bucket holes are actually the corruption that's happening from top to bottom. So that without stopping the bucket, sealing those, you're not going to retain much water in the bucket at all. So that's something we should do. So if you go through the first page, you will know um, what we are doing. But then we have summarized what we need to do to get our country back in three circles down here. Reduce the wastage. So if you don't need something, don't use it. Say corruption is one wastage because you are spending three times more than what is required to do a job. So that's corruption. Say reduce uh, wastage, say 101 ministers. So we have some 8,000, if you take the local governments as well, we got some 9,000 elected members of uh, politicians. So they have to have their cars, these, that, and everything else. What for? Only 21 million people. And we don't, we have that. So that's another wastage of money. So we don't have to waste. There are lots of wastages like that. There are, there are um, uh, non-profit making state uh, on enterprises, people are paying for it. Say, for example, the Sri Lankan Airlines, which is the most expensive airline to travel, earns only one third of its cost and the rest pays for it. And only 10% of the population uses it. So why should the others pay for it? So, so you have things like that. So you have to talk, but I'm not talking about this. I've got only 10 minutes. So we we'll learn, educate and assess. Okay. So we're doing workshop at different levels. Now there's a Marvinella workshop recently. On 25th, we are going to do for uh, farmers. And then another one, we are training children about risk management. So about drowning, fire, lightning, and so on. And also life-saving skills, basic life-saving skills. And um, Sri Lanka Life Saving has come forward voluntarily to give full support for training the children in schools. So which is good. So it is good. So, so we're promoting that. And then we got various videos of various things. This is when... Uh, the at the crisis time when the um, children had no no food in the schools. This was from Kalutara area, and these are videos you can go and have a look and see. There were children in these schools who brought empty lunch boxes because they had no food, but wanted to show that they brought food. Then there were children who drank only water all weekend because there was no food. There are staff members who brought two lunch packets so they can share one with the students. So, but I'm glad to say there are people who came forward and I know they, with the family and everybody, and they have supported five schools until end of the year, three days a week. So, so this is what we should be doing. So it's a, it's not a rescue for um, the problem we had, but it is preventing damage. That's, that's what it was. So we can make the difference. If you do that, so we make, uh, um, try to change things. So we started the petition. Anybody can sign that, but uh, there are 10, 12 items in that. I can show you a little bit about it. I have got another five minutes. So five minutes. Okay. So you got, so you have to get your emails, whatever. It can come in um, uh, any language. You can select the language. Okay. So. So very, this is a request. We are going to try to go to Supreme Court, say, include these items in our, in our um, constitution. So the things are, uh, you have, these are the, third. so we want all 30 basic human rights in the constitution. That's number one. Then we have embraced diversity 
and merit-based appointments and eliminating discrimination based on race, gender, religion, and disability. So you have a yes and no for all questions because we will take only the ones who will get more than 60% uh, consent to the Supreme Court level, not the whole petition. So that's why So it's a democratic process. At the moment, from the number we have signed, almost everyone has gone over 90% signatures. So we got 90% support. And we're getting Wade as well, which is good. And <laughs> so establish a common uh, Sri Lankan identity with every citizen having equal rights. Then we have independent judiciary and police is a requirement. Then we have uh, independent commissions are required for certain areas. And the, the tenure should be four years for any elected position because the, the water base changes about 10% every four years. So if the water base has changed 10%, because some have dead gone gone, some have re-entered. So the water base changes ten percent. So why should you, it's not valid anymore after about four years? That's why the four year term. Then we have uh, social responsibility. Here we are talking about. We have have a method of uh, supporting pregnant women, old age people, and disabled people, and unemployed uh, people, some way or the other. And and zero tolerance for bribery and corruption is important, and that has to be in the constitution. And Sri Lanka has to be non-aligned. At the moment, politicians go this way, that way, this way. They are not, not, not non-aligned. And, uh, and, and the reactivate people's right to call back elected representatives. Now, that's been removed from the, from the constitution. So we want it back so that if the people who elected want, 20% say we want to have a re-election, then we should give it. Something like that. So... Then there are two political questions. This abolished executive presidency at the moment, we got about more than 90% people saying yes. And then uh, abolish Manapi system. Manapi system is a huge corrupt system and that has to be abolished as well. So again, more than nearly 100% signatures for that at the moment. And we don't discuss anything, but to make it authentic, when you sign it off, you will need to do... Uh, put your NID so we don't duplicate the signatures. And then if the Supreme Court calls for, every individual can be traced. So because of that, so we're going slow, but we need an authentic petition. That's what we're doing. So hopefully we'll get there. We don't know. And thank you for listening. We got 10 minutes to talk. So I think I finished exactly on time. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's stop share there. Any questions at all? Anything? Uh, there's an online question somewhere. Yes. I will leave it online for the moment, but we have a face to face crowd here. <laughs> uh, anything else? Shall I take the online question? Yeah, online question. Here we go. Yeah, online question. You can you can ask the online questions. I'll put the speaker on, yeah. Uh, you had to unmute, I think. Is that a question? No. Okay. All right, that's fine. I think we can stop there. Any questions from the students? I think the students are there as well. Any, anybody from the staff, anything? No? Shall you stop there then? Here you go. Thank you very much, sir. So this is our previous dean talking now. Yeah. And the uh, valuable service you have done to the country, I think. Initiating this land health convention big program for the leadership. And uh, <clears throat> almost over the career. No, 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 no. I have rec recovered my career, no yeah. trouble. And, uh, <laughs> Anyway, together with all these founders, you know, they have a very strong foundation. No, no, I think the faculty yeah. is founded because of you, not and other or everybody else. Not, it's a collective thing. And one thing I want to say about administration is that if you become administrator in this country for long, because one of my friends from, I asked from Japanese, not Japanese, from Singaporean, uh, I am thinking about applying for deanship. What do you think? He said, we normally nominate my enemy to deanship because that is the end of the career. 
<laughs> so, so that's the Singaporean telling me. So because of that, if you're taking administrator, you will have to plan to recover yourself from there as well. Because at the end of that, you made a lot of enemies, a lot of this, that, and you've forgotten what you're doing and everything. So, so administration is a bit of a tricky thing to do. So anyway. For the academics, yeah. We have started a lot. We have a lot of alumni joined you. Very good, yeah. So then, yeah, we are around 20. All right, okay, thank you. So, there's a, there's a, yeah, just there's a one question from an online person. Lal, yes, you want to raise, you raise the hand, Lal? You want to speak up? We can't hear. Oh, can you hear now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear now. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask you, what's happened to the faculty now? Are, they, are you still training uh, graduates in nursing and teacher? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the faculty itself. Just a second. I'll show you everybody around, yeah? Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, the previous deans are there as well. Yeah, everybody. Okay, okay. The current dean is here. Say hello. Oh, hi. Yeah. Well done, well done. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, so I'm on site. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I must, you. the other thing I say is I, I was practically blown away, you know. I mean, that you can do things like that in Sri Lanka. It amazes me. You can. The amount yeah, that's of, exactly. I, yeah, I, you know, I, I can remember some of these troubles that you had about people going on strike and threatening doctors, all that I can remember. So I thought it died a death, you know. I never think that it succeeded. No, it's any... one of the best faculties in the Perdana Pera University now. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, well, well done, well done, <laughs> Jula. I'm, uh, no, it's I, everybody. I, I'm it's, not that that... it's everybody. Okay. Yeah, right. great. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you. I think we'll stop there now. It's nearly one o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, come there. Come here, come here, come here. Because you need to talk in here. Okay. Yeah, you can see there. Yeah, you can see your picture there. So this is our current dean. You can say yeah, something. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm, uh, I, in fact, I want to uh, thank Professor Chula as the founder, dean of the Faculty of Valid Health Sciences, where we also, um, the foundation laid by him, and he selected very good people as the founder members to the staff. And with that uh, founders, in fact, Right now, you can see a, a very good uh, team, a young, a very energetic, active uh, team is there with me. Like, uh, of course, most of them are really dedicated and they won't give it up easily. Exactly. Like we, in fact, we, we won't. We had a lot of troubles and we have completed 16 years of our history. And so far, we have graduated 13 batches. The beauty of that is we just uh, went through all the struggles, but we didn't, we never gave it up. Like uh, the similar right, thing right. happened in, uh, in year 2014 when Professor Mahinda was the dean. And that time, the, the again, the faculty was about to close with all these problems with the curricula. We were asked to prepare three plus one. And then uh, the students were on I think road. you spoke to me during that time, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. But uh, of course, at that time, we a uh, group of uh, staff members joined to the students. And we fought uh, from the bottom. We prepared documents and we fought at the Senate level. And we went to the parliament and uh, just uh, yeah. uh, raised our voice to safeguard the degree, uh, 220 credit. And we deceived the people who were uh, against that. And we deceived by telling that four year is 120 credit curriculum. And they wanted a four year curriculum, but we said we wanted a 120 credit curriculum. And by that tricky word, we you got all your modules. Yeah, we all, got all, all our yeah. modules and we safeguard our degree program as four years still. And uh, so we just had all these problems, but uh, uh, we came through and uh, we are in top of the, uh, the university, in fact. All our work is admired by the academic staff members of the university right now. And we recently completed the external review uh, by the UGC team last week. They even, in fact, they were all uh, praising, but they just, in fact, suggested the vice chancellor to give more facilities to this faculty. And he's visiting tomorrow Very to good. see. Uh, he would probably see it now. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, likewise, like uh, the, the work that we do is without. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just made a presentation to the council last February and I said, I'm not asking for luxuries. What we have, are doing is without luxuries, we do what we can. So that's why like all are trying to help us. So we need help from the, the, the people, the community or whatever the outside. Uh, You're so, getting the help from here now. So. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I have very good young energetic team for those <laughs> who are not uh, leaving uh, or the fighting and to safeguard the HS degrees because we are producing not only for Sri Lanka, but to the international arena because our graduates, especially the nursing, uh, radiography, physiotherapy, many are working in different countries. They are moving to outside the world. And so we are. We have become international and our, our curricula is recently revised last year with all these international requirements. So I think uh, compared to other faculties, we are doing a great job at the moment. And thanks all the founders. Thank and you. we are... Uh, I think we have started a service hub also closer to Gatame Junction near next to the Yeah, that's house. exactly very good because yeah. I think that's the opportunity. Yeah, so that's that good. provides physiotherapy, medical diagnostic, imaging, and the nursing has started mobile clinic there for screening. And I couldn't give them a space, but they are on air and they just uh, move around, walk around and give their service. So uh, like uh, we have started a postgraduate uh, master's in physiotherapy, master's in nursing, and the yeah. physiotherapy is doing diploma, again, a short course, one year short course in uh, sports health prevention and medicine. And they are about to start caregiver courses. Uh, Very good. So innovation, the, take yeah. it forward. Then uh, you'll get there. Don't block anything, just support. Yeah. Sometimes what they propose looks like dumb to me, but... I will then ask what is the benefit, what is the risk and all that from the very same person and then you'll get there. So very that's good. our our progress at the moment. Yeah, very good. So I must just say one word before I finish. So when I was going to Supreme Court, I actually learned how to behave there. I asked from someone to say how to say, what to say to the judge, how to, how to talk to the judge and everything because few things are important. You need to do a little bit of this thing. So after six sittings in the Supreme Court, talking all the time, and last one, I was I won it. And somebody came behind me and asked, and whether you are a lawyer or a doctor, because I might be getting another case. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, that's where I start. So you can pretend to be a lawyer when you are not, and then get there if you have the correct arguments. All right, thank you very much for everybody. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the online participants as well. Okay. Uh, you want? To, oh, there's somebody who wants to say something. So just give a second. Here we go. Thank you very much for your marvelous presentation, sir. I was five minutes late. Uh, sorry for that. Um, when I was appointed as a first lecturer to this university. So told me something. Uh, maybe I'm seeing sir after 12 years. Yeah, I haven't seen him for many years. But those words are within me and I still follow him. So because of that advice, I could become professor in pharmacy and uh, in my early 40s. So vice chancellor also wished me um, and told me, Sakina, you are one of the youngest professor in this university. And immediately I told him that is because of Chodas's advice. So that advice um, brought me to this farm. And the strength and support you gave me in the beginning helped me to stay this farm from 2006 um, until today. Excellent. Very so good. the words um, may be uh, good advice for my juniors as well. Maybe I'm a bit nervous <laughs> because I'm seeing you after a long time. <laughs> um, Sakina published two papers per year. Excellent. First, I told first, you to do that. Uh, first <laughs> advice, and I wrote on the same day in my diary. And that, that diary is still with me. <laughs> okay, I followed that advice. Um, and uh, I, this is my 17 or 18 years. And now I have nearly 40 publications, full Very paper good. publication um, in ISI journals and impact factor journals. That is because of you. Thank you, yes, sir. It's your own work. So and he that, gave right? me another advice. Um, Sakina, if you want to continue your profession, your career as an academic, 
do self analysis end of every year and see you are contributing 40% of teaching, 40% of research, and 20% for national and university development. And so frankly, and truly I did that every year, and I'm doing that even last year I did, and I, I made sure uh, my contribution aligned with your advice, 40% teaching, 40% research, and 20% that I contribute to my society, uh, country, and university developments. And I'm happy what I'm doing. And I'm so thankful to you for Please. giving me those advice in the beginning of my career. And um, what I am doing um, at this point, I also give advice because uh, as a senior academic, I'm going to become senior academic now. So many people are contacting me, not only from Peradeniya, from Rukhuna, Chapura, uh, Jaffna, KDU, even Open University, um, especially pharmacy and nursing academics and students are contacting me. So the same advice you gave me, yeah. those two, which made me a big impact in my life and helped me to stay and come this far in my career. So I'm telling the same thing. Publish two papers per year, stick to that, and make sure you do self-analysis at the end of every year. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. So, yeah. That's thank that, you, right? sir. So, that's what yeah. I so that say. reminds me thank one you. thing. Uh, when um, we were developing the curricula for us, we did a very good curricula. And then one of the other university embodying universities came along and said, uh, Can we join you to learn? I said, Yes. So, then they asked for the curriculum, and somebody came and asked from me, uh, They're asking for the curriculum that you develop. Shall we give it? They might steal it, I was told. I said, fantastic, let them steal it because they can only do education with it. So our objective of education will go further, even if they steal our curriculum. So why worry? Yeah, so fantastic. Yeah, thank you for all. Thank you for being there. And I'll stop here. It's one o'clock. Great. Thank you.